Welcome to the Engage Bible Podcast, hosted by the Roots Community Church. The Engage Bible Podcast exists to perpetuate knowing Scripture. Our hope is that through this podcast, you would be inspired to personally engage with your Bible and with fellow believers in conversation about Scripture. You can find out more about the Engage Bible Reading Plan and even download and print your own copy at engage.theroots.church. You can also contact us at engage at therootscommunity.com. Welcome to episode 49 of the Engage Bible Podcast. This is Casey Ball. I'm here with Russ Newkirk. You're correct. I'm here. And today we're going to be looking at... John chapter 15 and 16, and Revelation Woo! 1 through 5. <laughs> That's a big chunk of Revelation. Yeah, we're not going to look at that we only have much. a couple weeks left, so. Yeah. yeah, it's our last book, non-gospel book of the New Testament for the reading plan Just of the last the Bible, book of the New Testament. Yeah, of our yeah. podcast. Of the world. Yeah, so um, I'm pumped. There's, you know, Revelation is... Uh, From what I understand, you're an expert. (laughs) We were joking before the podcast um, that we're we're not experts on Revelation. No. And we're barely novices on Revelation. So um, we're going to do what we always do on this podcast, which is read it and uh, talk about... Jokes on stuff and keep moving. And make some (laughs) jokes and move on. No, seriously, there's some really cool stuff. Yeah, we are going to look at some awesome stuff today. Stuff that does make sense. It's just kind of beyond us because when we get to Revelation here in just a minute, we'll see that John is trying to explain something that is like beyond explanation. And so he is giving us this view into something that we can't really grasp. Yeah. And so it's kind of cool, but at the same time you're like, uh. Yeah. So, and people that try to go too far with some of it when they have explained it, I would say refrain, my there's, friend. Yeah, there's wait till you get to see it yourself. A lot of different views um, on the meaning of different things. Obviously, it's been misused constantly throughout church history um, because it is apocalyptic and has to do with the end. Yeah, and so how that's interpreted matters. Um, Especially if you want to start throwing dates on calendars of Don't when Jesus that. is going to return. So, Bad idea. Yeah. So anyways, we'll get there. Um, but uh, let's start with John. And uh, man, John 15, right off the bat, you have the, the vine and the branches. Yeah. Which is mega so cool. awesome. Yeah. So I want to just start reading from verse 5. I mean. Should start from verse 1. I think we have to start in verse 1. Okay. Okay, it says this. This is Jesus talking. I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. So he's using this analogy of of a tree. Agriculture, yeah. Yeah, and uh, and, and how important it is to be connected to the source. Right. And I love that it says that, you know, he'll cut off fruitless vines. Uh-huh. And that, he'll, branches, excuse and me. that he'll prune those that are producing to produce even more fruit. Right. And so... Which is interesting, right? So you're going to see the blade one way or another. That'll preach. Ayo. That's a sermon right there. <laughs> cut out or just, you know, cut pruned off. on. <laughs> <laughs> That's the cut out. Like we cut off. Yep. Or trimmed. We're just trying to come up with uh, sermon titles now. Uh, thanks for joining us today on brainstorming sermon titles as we go. <laughs> Yeah. And I love that he says, neither can you bear fruit unless you remain. Yeah, in. so good. And he's already said, like, I'm going. Like, I'm, I'm out of here, guys. I've done my thing. I'm, I'm about to get killed. Right. And, uh, and, and yet he says, remain in me. Right. Yeah. You want to pick it up at five? Yeah. I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me mm. and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoa. Now, clearly, he's talking about spiritually. Mm-hmm. 
You can still do some things. You just can't do anything of eternal good. Um, and so it's pretty strong, right? Like you can't do Christian Christ stuff without Christ. Mm-hmm. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into a fire, and burned. (laughs) If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. Hmm. This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. Hmm. His statement there of, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done, he's... He's he's made statements. He's going to continue to make statements like, like that. that that are severely. Whatever abused. you wish <laughs> does sound a lot like you have three wishes. Like it sounds right. genie like. I want a million dollars. Yeah. Um. But but that's obviously not what he's talking about because that has never proved to be successful <laughs> for anyone throughout history. He's talking about spiritual things, right? The whole time. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can do nothing. Apart from me. Yeah. Apart from Mm -hmm. me. So when you're in me and walking in me, remain in me. Yeah. And then you can ask whatever you wish. Because what you'll wish is what is his wish. Or will. Well, you know, I, yeah. I say wish by like He's, his want, yeah, like right. what he plans to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're instructed all over the Bible. All over. To ask, ask. it in my name. Yeah. Which means that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And there's certain things that seem to fit inside of that. That we see, you know, asking for wisdom, uh, asking to understand God's word and his His plan for our lives. Asking for courage. Asking for, asking for asking the ability for to do his commands. Mm-hmm. Asking for needs. Bread. Provision's one of them. Yeah. yeah. Provision, protection. Mm-hmm. Asking for greeds. healing. Asking, right. Mm-hmm. Right. Right, which is the ask, uh, the reason you ask and don't receive mm-hmm. is because you want it just for yourself. Sure. Yeah. Again, severely abused and yeah. And if you, I don't know. <laughs> that's, that's, that's impersonating, but I don't want to get uh, mean. Look at there's I, no words to go yeah. with your impersonation. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, yep. Verse twelve. My command is this: Love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. Hmm. You are my friends if you do what I command. I am a friend of God. God. That's your that's your jam. No, that's a song that every time it's ever sung, I think. You're asking people to sing this that a lot of them aren't actually friends of God. The Bible says, if you do what I command, mm-hmm. then you're my friend. So the song should say, I'm a friend of God if I do his commands. <laughs> <laughs> if I do his commands. <laughs> I am a friend of God. God. Wow. Um, That's crazy, though. Even just that verbiage. Yeah. Friend. It's really cool, and it really is awesome, but he's the one that calls you friend. You don't call yourself his friend. Have you ever ever been around this before? Kanye is a friend of God, I'm pretty sure he thinks. (laughs) Um, I hope he becomes one, for the record. Yes. No, I just think it's interesting when um, we make those bold statements in that way. Right, like yeah. I am. I, I just think any time there's like uh, a corporate worship setting, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and we're instructing people on what to say, it should be how awesome God is, not how great I am as a friend of God. Yeah, yeah. He's the great one. He calls me friend. What about verse sixteen? Read it. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. And so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you again. We just talked about that. And he's talking to the disciples. Right. This is not a blast. He's specifically, like, we can even track in scripture where he calls these people by name to come follow him. Right. Like, this is literal. Yeah, yeah. I didn't choose, or you didn't choose me. I chose you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hey, guys, leave the fish. Come with me. I'm going to make you fishers of men. So... I don't remember how far we'd have to go back in this conversation to who exactly he's talking to. Is he only talking to the 12? Is this after he's washed their feet? Yes. This is all one big monologue. He predicts the denial. He comforts them. He talks about the Holy Spirit coming. He's still going on this. This is a long sermon. (laughs) Yeah. A lot of different topics. Uh, It's a long dinner. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Your feet are clean now. Let's sit here and talk for a while. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so... Real quick before we 
Keep moving. Verse, verses uh, 18 and 19. If the world hates you, keep in mind yeah. that it hated me first. Verse 19 throws me, though. If you belong to the world, it would love you as its own. As it is, you do not belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. And so I wrote a question for myself in my Bible. Does the world hate me? Does the world love or hate you? Hmm. I don't think that's all people. No, e- sure. But, like, at what level should people, like, dislike me because of what I stand for? I guarantee there's people that don't like me for what I stand for. Right. In our culture, though, it's not... It's okay to say, like, well, I don't like what he believes, but people aren't going to, like... Yeah, that's They're true. not going to, like... Yeah. I don't want to play basketball with this guy because he says he, the only Jesus is the only way. You know what I mean? And he's too good. That's never happened. <laughs> Maybe when I was younger and I was playing with little kids or something. Uh, no, but I don't know. Like, at what point in a relationship, like a friendship, like my neighbor, who's yeah. about the same age, about yeah. the same walk of life, and so we've been having conversations. Yeah. So at what point is it acceptable <laughs> for him to hate me? Sure. Just like, how does this apply to me? Yeah. I think it's an interesting space, right? Like, hopefully they would love us because we love them as a neighbor. We're called to love our neighbor. Sure. Also, we see regularly in scripture, if we live a righteous life, that people that aren't will have a problem with that or can't have a problem with that because they feel judged because of just our actions. Mm -hmm. And if we're declaring that the only way is through Christ, like if we are actually presenting the gospel, they're either going to love us. Right, right for being used as a tool for God to save them. And that might not even be now. Like now they might hate you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then later love that you told them the gospel. Or they might hate you now and or love you now. And who knows? I mean, it's just a matter of, am I even giving them the opportunity to hate me (laughs) by telling them about Jesus? So that's your takeaway for today's (laughs) podcast, everyone. Are you giving people the opportunity to hate you? I mean, that's what it is. it hated me first, yeah. Jesus says. Yeah. So it's cool. Yeah. I just, I just like that Yeah, part. that's really cool. People yeah. are going to be really excited about that. <laughs> <laughs> so, it goes on to continue about yeah. that. But then um, and, and right before chapter 16, uh, Jesus starts talking again about the Holy Spirit, the advocate or the counselor, which is really um, like a, a lawyer, basically. Hmm. Like you're, mm-hmm. It's not counselor like, oh, how are you doing? How you been? It's counsel. Like in yeah. a courtroom. Yeah, yeah. Um, when the advocate comes, this is verse 26 of chapter 15, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me. It's That's awesome. awesome. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, we'll talk more about some things. Then we go to verse 7. Uh, but very truly I tell you, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the advocate will not come to you. That's the Spirit of God. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will prove the world to be in the wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. So the world's wrong about all these things. <laughs> about sin because people do not believe in me. About righteousness because I am going to the Father where you can see me no longer. And about judgment because the prince of the world now stands condemned. Mm. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. <laughs> but when he... The spirit of truth comes. He will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. All that belongs to the father is mine. That is why I said the spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So that I'm going to send the spirit, God's spirit, like the Holy Spirit, the advocate is going to come be in you and will testify about who Christ is, will glorify Christ, Mm -hmm. will guide you into all truth. Jesus just said that he is the truth. Mm -hmm. Like, this is awesome that the main job of the Holy Spirit, you know, there are spiritual gifts, there are the fruit of the spirit, um... But here, Jesus is saying, like, the the main reason the Spirit's coming is to remind you who Jesus is, like, to point to Jesus, mm-hmm. um, which is awesome. It's dope. Yeah. All the truth. The truth. He will, he will guide you into all the truth. Not a little bit. Yeah. Not some of it. Or not, not even all truth, but all the truth. All the truth. Or as we like to say on this podcast. Truth. Duh, <laughs> truth. 
That's so D A apostrophe. <laughs> Thanks for T R O. Oh, you're gonna spell it for him. <laughs> Duh, truth. So I think we should end um, our time in John. What do you think? Let's keep moving. Let's let's go. Can we just read verse thirty three? Oh, okay. I've told you, you these you things to about all these hard things that are coming, so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble. Not you might. Not you could. You will. But take heart! Exclamation point. I have overcome the world. So you're gonna have trouble. I already I already overcame a thing. But you're gonna have trouble. But take heart and have peace because you're with me. Yeah, it's awesome. Next week I can't wait to talk about um, the prayer of, of John 17. Ooh, it's yeah. really cool for sure. The high priestly prayer. High priestly prayer. Revelation. Ah, oh, your specialty. Hit it. Oh my goodness. So, uh, Revelation is a book of the Bible. <laughs> it's a revelation. It's, uh, Give it to John. <laughs> no, uh, it's, uh, it's, yeah. John exiled to an island. Yeah. And has this vision <laughs> that he writes down. And uh, it's apocalyptic. Um, it's just fun to say. Yeah, it, that is a great word. But it is an apocalyptic writing, and so yeah. everything is is from that um, vantage point as in terms of a genre. I think we should read the introduction a little bit, and then I think we should um, sp- spend some time just looking at one of the churches. I think we should – I mean, as far as introduction, John just says, I'm going to tell you what I saw. Yeah. Whoever reads this aloud is blessed. Once they hear it is blessed. It's all about Jesus. And I think we should talk just real quickly about that, like he's on, like he runs into Jesus. Right. But I really want to move, because I want to make sure we talk about the churches, and I want to talk about the throne room, because we only, we have just a few minutes to talk about these five chapters. Right, right. So watch Short this fly chapters. by, you ready? Yeah. <laughs> the, the one thing that I will say I love about Revelation is um, how cool it is to see, like we've, we've seen Jesus, we just saw him washing his disciples' feet, and like being being the friend yeah humble and and in revelation like he's like be a yeah he's coming to get you uh dressed in like white so bright you it's like i can't even look uh, you can't even look he's got the the sword yeah he's like you know he's just he's the hero yeah you know and uh and it's pretty epic so it is and we don't we don't see that whole picture just today we see some of it today yeah um but John's vision of Christ. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So first he's told to write everything down that he's about to see. Um, and it says in verse 12, I turned around to see the voice that was speaking to me. And when I turned, I saw seven gold lampstands. And among the lampstands was someone like a son of man, dressed in a robe, reaching down to his feet with a golden sash around his chest. The hair on his head was white like wool, as white as snow. And his eyes were like blazing fire. His feet were like bronze glowing in a furnace, and his voice was like the sound of rushing waters. <laughs> Think of that. That's, that's awesome. In his right hand, he held seven stars, and coming out of his mouth was a sharp, double-edged sword. His face was like the sun shining in all its brilliance. Mm-hmm. All its brilliance? That's, Dude, that's during the eclipse, I couldn't even look at, like, at, at the smallest percentage of sun without burning a hole through my head. I tried. And that's why you and, now can't see. You're yeah. just reading a Braille Bible right now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm reading um, a Braille Bible. <laughs> so this picture of Jesus is, and it has to say like this, like this, like this, because he's trying to explain something that's unexplainable. Yeah. It was like this. Yeah. It was like this. Yeah. It wasn't this. It was like it. Yeah. Um, when I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. It sounds like you passed out there, John, or at least you just collapsed. Mm-hmm. He placed his right hand on me and said, do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I'm the living one. I was dead and now look, I'm alive forever and ever. And I hold the keys of death and Hades. Got it all. That's dope. Yeah. Um, but then we're going to see that he's told to write everything down. And there's this um, writing specific things to these seven different churches in what was known as Asia at the time, mm. um, which is basically modern day Turkey. Yeah. Um, so Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamum, Pergamum, Theatira, Thyatira, <laughs> Sardis, 
Philadelphia. Yeah, that one. There we go. Laodicea. Um, and one thing I want to point out, because I don't know, I don't think we'll have time to get go through each one of these separately. Uh, that I really liked, and you can speak on it too, is um, they they start and end differently to all these churches. The intro to each one of these churches is a um, a descriptive of Jesus, mm-hmm. the one writing this to or who it's from to these churches, <clears throat> and I it just think it's really cool. And that the end of each of these little letters to the churches is this descriptive of those that persevere and are saved and something they get like this reward mm-hmm. for being one of God's people that um, follow after him. And so each one ha- has kind of the same flow to it. Yeah. Although each one, the topic that will be brought up with each one is unique right. to the church that is speaking to. Right. They all got th- their different problems. Yeah. Um, if you look on a map, all of these churches are in pretty close proximity to right. each other. Um, and uh, and what's what's really interesting to me is these are all Gentile churches, like in a Gentile hmm. yeah. area. Um, this right, isn't probably Jews in this, the churches. But. This is pretty far away from like Jerusalem. Um, and so the thing that I think we need to read is the de- how he defines what the stars um, and the lampstands are um, as the messengers and the churches yeah, and the lampstands. Yeah, yeah, are the churches. So, yeah, the mystery of the seven stars you saw in my right hand, and of the seven golden lampstands is this. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven lampstands are the seven churches. Right. And when I um, have studied Revelation in the past, and it's it's going to in each introduction. So much to for each being a novice. Church. <laughs> um, the the word that is used here in Greek for angel it can also be translated. It probably says it on, on the foot note of your bible as messenger and um in these churches they would have a person elected in their like services Mm -hmm. to be the person that would pray out loud like for the congregation and so that's one way that they've speculated that it's addressed to that person to kind of to the message of the church like say this yeah 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 um, and then, you know, as you mentioned, each um, each letter to each church. Um, Which sometime we'll have to get into each of them because they're pretty cool. They totally are. Um, but they have an introduction. Um, uh, Usually some praise. Sure. Yes. Here's and where you're good. It's it's a, it's a, a compl- or a, uh, what do they call it? Sandwich. What is it? A compliment sandwich. I don't know. Um, but then there's a rebuke. Mm-hmm. And then there's... Talks about what's good, what the faults are. Um, He he talks about how it can be fixed, says, listen to me, and then he has some encouragement for them, like you said, a a reward. Yeah. Yeah. Let's... um, I'd love to, even if we don't break them down church by church, um, just kind of read that first line of each one of these. Because it says, like the first one says... These are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks among the seven golden lampstands. Like Jesus That's is cool. amongst these churches. Yeah, yeah. The next one says, these are the words of him who is the first and the last who died and came to life again. And this one says, these are the words of him who has the sharp double-edged sword. The next one. These are the words of the son of God whose eyes are like blazing fire and whose feet are like burnished bronze. The next one. These are the words of him who holds the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. The next one. These are the words of him who is holy and true, who holds the key of David. What he opens, no one can shut, and what he shuts, no one can open. Hmm. And the last one. These are the words of the amen, the faithful and true witness, the ruler of God's creation. Just cool. Each one of these is a different intro Mm -hmm. to the power and awesomeness of of Jesus and that each one ends. Um, and we talked about it before we even started this with to the one who is victorious. Like if you hold on mm-hmm. and so he promises these different rewards kind of to each group here, he's saying a different way, just the way he introduces Jesus a different way each time. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll give the right to eat from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. Mm-hmm. Uh, the next one is it, the one who is victorious will not be hurt at all by the second death, the final judgment. Mm-hmm. The one who is victorious, I will give some of the hidden manna. That sounds cool. I will also give that person a white stone. 
with a new name written on it. <laughs> known only to the one who receives it. Wow. To the one who is victorious and does my will to the end, I will give authority over the nations. Ooh. That one will rule them with an iron scepter and will dash them to pieces like pottery. Just as I have received authority from my father, I will also give that one the morning star. I want one of those. The one who is victorious will, like them, be dressed in white. Will never, I will never blot out the name of that person from the book of life, but will acknowledge that name before my father and his angels. I am coming soon. Hold on to what you have so that no one will take your crown. The one who is victorious, I will make a pillar in the temple of God. Never again will they leave it. I will write on them the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which is coming down out of heaven from my God. And I will also write on them my new name. And the last one, to the one who is victorious, I will give the right to sit with me on my throne, just as I was victorious and sat down with my father on his throne. Mm-hmm. Just cool rewards. Like, yeah. you, like, listen, stick with it. There is a crown for you. Mm-hmm. I mean, Paul would have verbiage like this. Yeah. Like, I train and I run to win the prize so that I don't want to be disqualified. I want to run this race all the way to the end, strong, and, and get the crown. Victorious. I think the, the cool part about all of the letters is that, you know, some churches, some of these churches that are that he's writing to are worse than others. Yes, yeah, as far some as where they're at. Some of them seem kind of good. Some yeah. of them seem like totally. they're doing pretty bad. All of them have opportunities. There's no perfect one. Yeah. And, like, Jesus is concerned about those churches, like, continuing to be faithful in their walk with him. Yeah. And, and to do a purifying work in those churches right. to make sure that they are continuing to follow God with everything. Right. And, uh, yeah. In, in fact, one of me says, those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline. Yeah. Which is cool because it shows that that's what he's doing in all this. Yeah. That he's saying, listen, you're great. I see your deeds, your hard work. I see what you're up to. I also see these other things that are off base. Mm-hmm. And I want you to deal with them. Right. And, and I want you to persevere. And for those that do, this is what you have waiting for you. Yeah. Um, and it is interesting, like you said, because each one of these churches has like a little bit different stuff going on. Mm-hmm. Some of me straight up says like, you're going to suffer mm-hmm. <laughs> and you're going to be persecuted. and It's going to be rough, but keep persevering. Other ones, he says like, I'm going to keep you from that. Hmm. You know what I mean? And so it's like, he, he's speaking to the context of where they're actually at and what they're working through and what's ahead for them. I think we can learn a lot though, because it shows God's heart for his church yeah. in these different things. Yeah. The throne. This is where it starts getting really crazy. Oh, man. Picture this. Chapter 4, verse 3. And the one who sat there had the appearance of jasper and ruby, a rainbow that shone like an emerald and circled the throne. Surrounding the throne were 24 other thrones, and seated on them were 24 elders. They were dressed in white and had crowns of gold on their heads. From the throne came flashes of lightning, rumblings, and peals of thunder. In front of the throne, seven lamps were blazing. These are the seven spirits of God, also known as the sevenfold spirit of God. Also in front of the throne, there was what looked like a sea of glass, clear as crystal. That's dope. In the center around the throne were four living creatures, and they were covered with eyes in front and in back. The first living creature was like a lion. The second was like an ox. The third had a face like a man. The fourth was like a flying eagle. Each of the four living creatures had six wings and was covered with eyes all around, even under its wings. Day and night, they never stopped saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. Whenever the living creatures give glory, honor, and thanks to him who sits on the throne and who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. They lay their crowns before the throne and say, you are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and by your will they were created and have their being. What an epic picture. Yeah. It's it's crazy sounding some of it like you're like trying to pick you know he's saying like it's like this it's like that because he's going how do i explain this so he's writing it down right um and then from here it doesn't get any less crazy 
Yeah. But I mean the 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 picture is is just that like grand epic like oh yeah there's amazing these big creatures worship. and these elder yeah everybody's yes. singing and yeah yeah in all right we still have chapter 5 here we go then i saw on the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll with writing on both sides and sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming in a loud voice, Who is worthy to break the seals and open the scroll? But no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth could open the scroll or even look inside it. I wept and wept because no one was found who was worthy to open the scroll and look inside. Then one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. See the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David. Did I say David? David. Has triumphed. (laughs) He is able to open the scroll and its seven seals. Then I saw a lamb, capital L lamb, by the way, looking as if it had been slain, standing in the center, at the center of the throne, encircled by the four living creatures and the elders. The lamb had seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent out into all the earth. He went and took the scroll from from the right hand of him who sat on the throne. And when he had taken it, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb. Each one had a harp and they were holding golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of God's people. And they sang a new song saying, you are worthy to take the scrolls or the scroll and to open its seals because you were slain. And with the, with your blood, you purchased for God, Persons from every tribe and language and people and nation. That's dope. Amazing. Yeah. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests to serve our God, and they will reign on the earth. Then I looked and heard the voice of many angels, numbering thousands upon thousands and 10,000 times 10,000. They encircled the throne and the living creatures and elders in a loud voice they were saying worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise then i heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea and all that is in them saying to him who sits on the throne and to the lamb be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever the four living creatures said amen and the elders fell down and worshipped. Now that's a worship service. You got thousands upon thousands upon thousands of up. angels. You got everything <laughs> everywhere. It's yeah. so cool. And in one of the my favorite pictures in all of this is verse five and six when he's stressed out about what's going to happen with this seal. Mm-hmm. And one of the elders said to him, "Do not weep. See the lion of the tribe of Judah." The root of David has triumphed. He's able to open the scroll and its seven seals. And I always just picture that, like the thought, right? Like you're weeping because there's something beautiful behind this. It seems like everybody's, how are we going to open this? Like this needs to be dealt with and, Mm -hmm. and we can't find anybody anywhere at all. And so you're weeping and then there's don't weep. And so there's this idea of no one's strong enough. And then, but wait, there's the lion of the tribe of Judah, which just sounds so strong, right? Like, that's what we needed. Mm. Nobody can open this. There's the lion of the tribe of Judah. And then verse six, then I saw a lamb looking as if it had been slain, standing at the center of the throne. It just, it's so cool how it just kind of, it it just messes with you on Mm. some level, right? Like there's this. The lion of Judah is so powerful. I looked, and there it was. It's a lamb. The lion's a lamb. <laughs> and, it, and it's not like this, oh, wow, it looks more powerful than everything. It's a slain lamb. Yeah. And yet it's the only one worthy. Yeah. And powerful enough to deal with it. And so it's just just amazing picture. Um, and then there's this worship scene out of, like, well, only Revelation. Like, there's yeah. no way to explain out of heaven. Like, there's no other way to say it. Yeah. Yeah. So there it is. So next week, we can't wait to talk more Revelation. Woo! We'll see how it goes. We love you guys. <laughs> love you. <laughs> Peace. Peace. Thank you for listening to this week's Engage Bible Podcast. We pray it is a blessing to you. 
we encourage you to go now and participate in your own reading of Scripture and engage with fellow believers in Bible conversations. As a reminder, you can access and print a copy of the Engage Bible Reading Plan at engage.theroots.church.